Hey guys, last week I challenged myself by going vegetarian for a week in China and it wasn't actually too hard. So I thought I should take it one step further and really challenge myself. So this week I'm going vegan. But before getting into the video, I wanted to hear from an actual vegan in China to hear his experience and also to get some tips. When thinking about making a video about vegans and veganism in China, I really, really had to come here to Wuhan to interview my friend Elliot here. Thank you. Uh, how long have you been in China? Some somewhere between six and seven years. And of course, Elliot isn't going to say it himself, so I'll say it for him. His Chinese is absolutely amazing. He's like, <laughs> no way. <laughs> so this is about Tianli, which is kind of like the truth defined by the principle of heaven, to Zhenli, which is more kind of like a, which is a bit closer to like the enlightenment conception of truth. Do about, you think it's hard? See, uh, I think this is really quite easy. Um, <laughs> 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 I'm doing a master's. I'm about to start my philosophy PhD. Uh, and he's know, studying with Chinese students, so you can imagine like studying philosophy is hard enough, but he's actually studying philosophy in Chinese. So I just wanted to like, you know, brag Thanks. on your behalf. Thanks, but like <laughs> seriously, I don't even know if I'm gonna get the PhD. So let, let, let's let's okay, let's well, not brag just too early. We're gonna calm the chickens before they hatch. Okay, cool. But vegan chickens, of course. Ve obviously, because you're a vegan. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, um, yeah. last time I checked. So how long have you been vegan? Yeah, so I started kind of uh, going down that channel uh, when I was about 16 or 17. So in your opinion, is it hard to be vegan in China? Absolutely not. Like, yeah. it is, uh, it's a paradise to be honest. Yeah. Uh, especially for a student, you know, like, you know, vegan products back home can be so, so expensive. Yeah. Uh, whereas here, you know, I can get tofu. I can get like a kilo of tofu. It's, it's really cheap. It's really cheap. Like, yeah, it's, it's really, 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 really cheap for tofu. Yeah. And cause you know, China, it's got a history of Buddhism uh, and it's one of the only Buddhisms, types of Buddhisms in the world, uh, which advocates vegetarianism. So ever since Buddhism entered into China, yeah. uh, they've just been working really hard at how to accommodate for a vegetarian Buddhist community. So they are sick at yeah. making re meat replacement stuff. They've got like thousands of years of history. So in terms of like vegans in China, would you say there are many? Uh, no, not very. Plant-based diets are not in, of, in it of itself a thing. It kind of complements okay. like a different lifestyle. So Buddhism is probably the uh, the, the primary example. Uh, and so the, the people who call themselves Buddhists, yeah. you know, they don't think of themselves as vegan, yeah. right? But it's just it just so happens that they eat, eat a vegan okay. diet. There are as many uh, vegans in China as there are practicing Buddhists. Do you think that the vegan community will grow in China because of influence from the West. Like I know in the mm. uh, like America, Australia, the UK, everywhere you go, there are vegan options. It's like fashionable to be a vegan these it's days. It's so hot right now. Yeah. I would I, personally, I would love to see it grow here. Yeah. I can't imagine it growing substantially across the across the nation yeah. uh, in the foreseeable future because meat mm. as well. In the same way that you know veganism and vegetarianism is kind of like a symbol uh, back home yeah. of a certain type of lifestyle, a certain ethic. Meat here also has the symbolic value of, you know, representing a certain class status yeah. and a certain way of life and a kind of, um, it's a divider uh, for, you know, your economic circumstances within the nation. Okay, so I know that you exercise, you go to the gym, you are fitness conscious. I know, I know where this is going. So what, where do you get your protein? Where do you get your protein? <laughs> Tofu. You've got things called Satan. I'm not sure if I, I, I think it's called Satan. Yeah, I know what you're yeah, talking about. It, but yeah, I go to... Satan for quite a lot, uh, and I mix. <laughs> <laughs> I go to Satan for quite a lot. There's all sorts of variations of soy products. I also eat a lot of oats, and oats has got like oh, more, cool. yeah, oats have got loads of protein. And I think that personally, for me, my understanding of it, the the way to eat as a vegan in China in China is actually to forget your own vegan identity. So you to be vegan, you have to forget what it means to be a vegan. Okay, well that brings me on to my next question, which is what kind of tips can you give to any vegans currently in China mm. or any vegans thinking of coming to China? Any okay. tricks of the trade? Before you come here, uh, just learn a couple words. Bring that list with you and just be like, I can't eat this or that and see, you know, see where the conversation takes you. Uh, there, there, is a, there is kind of like a, you know, a get out of jail kind of card and that's just only eat at temples. Okay, so temples serve yeah. Food. The temples serve food, but it doesn't mean that you're going to be living near a temple. Cool. Well, I'm going to be a vegan for the next week in China. Mm, you're going to be fine. I'm going to be fine. Okay, cool. So um, I'm going to 
eat at some temples. Yeah. I'm like, if I just go to a normal Chinese restaurant, there'll be things I can eat there. Yeah, of course. So I guess, so I guess what I'm getting from what you've said today is, you know, try your best to be vegan, mm. but have maybe be a bit more flexible with it. Yeah, be vegan to the extent that you can be in China. It's that 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 that, that that's, is really good advice. That 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 that's all I can really say. Uh, at its core, I think veganism is an ideology. Yep. I personally think that it's you know a fairly admirable ideology. But like any ideology, you can't just take it from you know uh, place A and put it into place B yeah. and kind of expect it to be identical without any form of change. It's the same with something like democracy or capitalism. You know, different countries because of their different you know cultural makeup are gonna you know take this like this core idea and do something a little bit different with it uh, and the same can be said for veganism you know we're not going to see it in its a, its mirror form uh, in China spoken like a philosopher bro you're going to get your PhD I'm not <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to end up on the internet somewhere just talk, talk, well, talking shit yeah, yeah. it's a start <laughs> well thank you so much for your advice and uh, yeah wish me luck thanks go for it Okay, so as always, the day must start with the breakfast and I wouldn't have it any other way. So what do vegans eat in China? Well, you have lots and lots of options. I'm gonna take you to eat one of my favorite breakfasts that just so happens to be vegan. Keep in mind, all of the dishes in this episode are of course suitable for vegetarians also. And um, meat eaters, please feel free to try some of these dishes. They're all they're all delicious. So these behind me here are balza, steamed bun with various different fillings. And the, the dough itself of the balza is vegan. You don't have to worry about that. It's made of flour, yeast, water, and a little bit of sugar. Um, so what you want to be worried about is what's on the inside. A lot of the popular buns are filled with meat, but there are just as many non-meat options that are really, really popular too. You're not going to find any buns are filled with any kind of dairy. Dairy just isn't a feature of Chinese cuisine. So the main thing you need to look out for is meat and egg. So maybe, yeah, vegans don't eat egg. So just make sure you know the phrase, I can't eat meat or egg, which is So uh, let's see what options we've got here. Hey, hey, Okay, so here is my balza. I have one balza and one mantou. Um, mantou is basically a balza but with nothing inside. So, um, yeah, this is a this is a mantou. This is also suitable for vegans. Eat this, no problem. Once I even tried putting peanut butter on this, uh, it tastes quite good. So it acts as a nice bread substitute if you if you need it. But today we're going to focus on the balza. Um, so. You know, it's typically got quite a thick skin and on the inside you've got all that delicious veg. Such a filling and simple breakfast. Mm. Yeah. My personal record for balza eating, once I ate five in one sitting. I was pretty proud of that. I was hungry that morning. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I look like a hillbilly. So I was on my way back and I passed the 7-Eleven and I thought I'd come in and show you just how many vegan friendly snacks you can find here. So definitely stay away from the, the packaged meat section. You can't eat that. But over this side here, you've got all the nuts, like some dried fruit and nuts here, cashews. You've got all these like dried fruit stuff, dried mango, seeds, seaweed. Wait, seaweed, that's vegan, right? These would have to be vegan, right? Cucumber flavored chips. I would like to think so. Oh my God, there are so many ingredients all in Chinese. I'm assuming that it's vegan. But the moral of the story is there are so many snacks at 7-Eleven and all of like the convenience stores here that vegans, no problem. Okay, let's talk about dairy in China. Luckily for the vegans out there, you don't really have to be concerned about consuming dairy products in China because it's not really a typical feature of Chinese cuisine. And in fact, a lot of Chinese themselves are lactose intolerant. So unless you're going to like a Western Chinese restaurant, like an Italian restaurant or a, a whatever, they're probably gonna be putting cheese and butter in stuff. But otherwise, if you're eating at Chinese places, 
You don't have to worry about the dairy situation. But if you're someone who enjoys your morning coffee like I do, and you're used to having your alternate milks in your home countries, like the soy milks, the almond milk, don't, don't worry, China is gonna be good to you. Um, something I'm super excited about is that Oatly, which is in my opinion the best alternate milk, it's, an, it's a kind of oat milk, is available in pretty much every Chinese coffee shop, um, especially the boutique ones, but um, one that I'm really happy that it's in is Pacific Coffee. It's like a Starbucks, you can find it on almost every street corner in the big cities. And yeah, it serves Oatly, so you can have your matcha lattes, your cappuccinos, your uh, whatever drink you want replaced with um, oat milk. But of course, you can still find the soy milk in China. Um, almond milk I don't see as regularly, but, um, but yeah. Good tip. Gonna go get my uh, my latte. Why am I putting on my sunglasses to go inside? My good lord. Uh, we are gonna It's really weird because being Australian, we're usually so up with like the vegan trends and the you know the smoothie bowls and the avocado toast. Like we're pretty cutting edge when it comes to eating healthy. But I can't even really find Oatly in Australian um, coffee shops, and it's so weird being able to find it in China before Australia. But I, I think it's just a matter of time before it eventually comes to Australia. Hey guys, I've come here to just, you know, your ordinary Chinese restaurant, nothing special. I uh, haven't checked out the menu yet, um, so let's just see what kind of vegan options we can find here. Oh, they have tudosu. I love tudosu, we're gonna get that. It's like these, uh, like shredded potato, like, it's like shredded potato in like this sour sauce. Oh, boiled potatoes with eggplant, that also sounds nice. Uh, in my limited experience as a vegan slash vegetarian in the last two weeks, potato and eggplant have been absolutely essential. There are so many delicious potato and eggplant dishes um, that are vegan and vegetarian in China. So you may want to know how to say these two vegetables when you come to China. So potato is tudo and eggplant is qiezi. And fun fact, when people take a photo in China, instead of saying cheese, they say qiezi. So here is my tudosu, and you can see it's almost like a spaghetti of potato. Yeah, there's heaps of vinegar in this, so you definitely feel that sourness in a really good way, and yeah, a good hit, kick of spice. And here we have our eggplant and boiled potato. Mm. So if you're vegan, you're going into a local Chinese restaurant, you're unsure what you should be ordering, keep a lookout on the menu for both potato and eggplant, tudo or qiezi. Remember those characters, and uh, you should be able to find at least one super yummy thing you can eat. But do keep in mind that dishes like this, you know, potato related dishes or eggplant related dishes, they'll often have meat added as just like a little bit of a garnish, as I mentioned in the last video. So you just want to make it super, super clear when you're ordering your dishes that you cannot eat meat um, or any meat related ingredients, and you should be fine. Okay, this is like my dream and also probably the dream of many vegans out there also. So here they're selling sweet potatoes and corn, freshly baked. It's basically like this little oven on wheels. So these two guys, they do their best to evade the local police because when the police see them selling street food, they will be told to move on or I don't really know what the punishment is, but I love them. I think they're doing a great service for this city, feeding the hungry vegans. Like a It's gotta be one of the messier things you can eat, but it's delicious. I'm here in a city called Tranzhou. It's a place with a huge Buddhist community. In fact, there's just a huge Buddhist pagoda right here behind me. So I thought it was time for me to take Elliot's advice, go find myself some temple food and try some fake meat. Hello. 
Okay, I am here at the Temple Restaurant. Uh, look, that's not a technical term. That's not what they're referred to, but it is uh, Buddhist here. Downstairs there is like a little Buddhist um, temple slash worshipping area. And then upstairs you have this restaurant and everyone is super, super nice here. So my question I had for Elliot is how you actually find these places, these Buddhist temple vegan food places. Because um, they're not exactly lining every street corner. You kind of have to know where to go. So he told me the best idea is to type in Sushi, these characters, which I'll also type down below for ease of copy and pasting. Okay, guys, a little editor's note here. Sushi, those two characters, they more broadly um, direct you to vegetarian restaurants. But if you want to find the Buddhist y, temple y restaurants um, specifically, you can type in the character Jai. Um, I'll type it here and also put it down below as well. So yeah, either of those two words, su shi or jai will do the trick. So you want to copy and paste those characters into either Dianping, which is like the Chinese Yelp, or, um, or Baidu Maps, or some kind of Chinese map service, and it'll come up in your vicinity the closest uh, vegan, vegetarian, buddhist -y temple food places that you can go visit. Um, so hope that's useful for you. I don't have a whole lot of experience ordering fake meat, so I don't really know what is good to have. So I'm just going to order what looks nice and uh, we will see how we go. I have to say, it looks all looks really tasty. Like, that looks like something I'd like to eat right now. Or even this, that looks quite meaty. My first fake meat dish has arrived. First impressions, it smells really good, but it also has quite a floppy texture. I'm very, very curious to try and see. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I guess if you kind of like squint your eyes a bit, it tastes a bit meaty. Look, I think it just takes a bit of getting used to. The, definitely the, the more I eat it, the more I'm, you know, willing to eat it. How can I describe this texture? It's like, it's like a sponge, um, but quite watery. Yeah, I feel like that's a good description. Yeah, I'm not going outside today. It's way too gray and gross and drizzly and cold. So I'm electing to stay inside all day. So of course I need someone to deliver me my food right to my door. I'm hungry, so let's order some takeout. So one of the most obvious vegan slash vegetarian options in China is of course tofu. And I haven't specifically mentioned it before. So um, yeah, China is like a heaven for tofu lovers. You've got Silken tofu, hard tofu, you know, chili, without chili, um, deep fried, steamed, with noodles, with rice. Yeah, I could go on, but I'm not going to because I'm hungry. So today I'm going to go ahead and order my favoritest ever tofu dish in China, mapu tofu. Um, it's pretty popular. If you haven't heard or tried mapu tofu before, it's from Sichuan province. Um, and Sichuan is famous for the very spicy, mouth-numbing food. So mapu tofu is no exception. It's spicy, mouth-numbing. Um, it's really hot and like comforting and warm. So perfect dish to eat on this grizzly, 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 grizzly day. Okay. <laughs> Let's order. So I'm gonna get this one here, mapo tofu. Yeah. I also wrote a little message to the restaurant here telling them not to add any animal fats and not to add any meat or any meat products because I learned in the comments of my last video that that is something I really need to be careful about and I had no idea that they would put in especially the animal fats. Um, so yeah, I have learned from my mistakes. <laughs> Here we have our mapu tofu. It's been in the room for like 30 seconds and it's already filled the room with such a scent. So one thing to note is that a lot of restaurants serve mapu tofu, not just the Sichuan restaurants because it's a really popular dish in general. Um, today, I've, I think I've accidentally ordered from a non Sichuan restaurant. So it's not super authentic, but it is still vegan. Yeah, still super tasty. <laughs> it's got lots of peppercorns in there, so I'm still getting the mouth numbing sensation. It's spicy and it's warm and it makes me feel good. Okay, I'm finishing off my last day as a vegan here in China with some delicious stir fried Chinese greens. I have eaten this more than once this week. 
I feel so healthy. And don't be thinking all Chinese greens are the same. They all have very unique flavors. Some are more on the bitter side. Some are more on the sweeter side. Some are more tender. Some are crispier. Like, it really depends. And uh, yeah. It's such a lovely variety. Yeah, so you've got more of the lettuce variety, then you've got like the bok choy type thing. Sweet potato leaves are delicious. Xiao Bai Cai, Chinese cabbage, that's great. Cabbage, and these are my new personal favorite. These are delicious. I really enjoyed the last two weeks. Week one being vegetarian, week two being vegan. I have to be honest with you though, I didn't really see a huge difference between the two weeks except for the fact that in week one I ate egg, week two I didn't. I just want to clear something up. In my country, in Australia, and I think for a lot of Western countries as well, vegetarians do eat egg. Um, and it was made aware to me in the comments of my previous videos that um, a lot of vegetarians from other countries, namely India, I heard, um, they, vegetarians, they don't eat eggs. So I'm sorry if my first video um, offended anyone who is vegetarian and who does not eat egg, but I was just reflecting uh, the culture, the vegetarian culture that I know from my country. So just wanted to clear that up. But yeah, I've learned so much in these last two weeks. Um, I really enjoyed learning more about like the vegetarian side of Chinese cuisine. And I already knew there were so many delicious vegetables and vegetarian options in China, but you know, this has really reinforced it to me. I know that I have, I didn't mean to, but I'm sure that in the last few weeks I have slipped up unknowingly. Um, you know, people may have been putting animal fat into my dishes to make them taste better or something. Um, but yeah, I guess I've tried my best. Um, and I think that's the best advice I could give anyone coming to China, especially if you don't speak Chinese. Um, I can almost guarantee you're going to slip up and you're going to find that, oh, this dish I've been eating for the last two weeks, it's actually adding pork fat or pork oil or a little bit of ground meat shavings or something. I don't know. I guess just try your best when you're coming to China. <laughs> Looking forward, I am going to be um, reducing my meat intake in general, but you know, I am going to go back to eating meat uh, you know, occasionally, one of my biggest passions is, uh, you know, traveling and trying the local cuisine. And in a lot of local cuisine, they do add meat. So, you know, I'm not going to restrict myself, but yeah, I've definitely learned a lot this week. I really enjoyed um, eating both vegetarian and vegan. And I really, truly hope that this video or these two videos have been helpful to you guys. So yeah, please subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye guys.